So hello friend, this is Rupesh and you're watching CPP Nut video series on C++ multi-threading topics and this is binary semaphore. This is going to be a complete hands-on experience on semaphores, not just the theory part like whatever you have always heard about. So watch this video till the end, okay? We'll have a real life C++ explanation for this binary semaphore. So first and foremost, why to go for semaphores? So this is for signaling. So the basic difference between mutex and semaphore is semaphore is used for signaling purpose and mutex is actually for the ownership. So it's like I have the ownership, I will execute something and signaling is like, hey dude, I'm done. Now you start or something like that. Or let me know when you are done, I will start something. So signaling each other. For simplest way, you have a bucket here. One thread T1 will actually fill this bucket until unless this is filled, this T2 cannot empty this bucket. So T1 will fill and then T1 will tell, okay, T2, now you can empty this bucket. So T2 will empty this bucket and then T2 will signal T1. Now I have emptied this bucket. You can start filling something like that. So here you can obviously use mutex, no problem, but you see that, okay, one thread is signaling to another thread and this is more like a semaphore use case. So let's not talk about much difference about the semaphore and mutex because I'll have a separate video for that and with so many stuff in that. This video is binary semaphore. So let's assume you have a main thread here. We have a main thread. The moment you create one T1, let's say you are creating a thread here, thread object. You spawn a thread. This is running T1. So far we have seen this, right? Like you create a thread, this will start running and it will acquire a mutex and if it can acquire the mutex, it will go ahead and do the job. But wait a minute, here what we'll do, we'll create thread, but thread will not start its job. It will wait for our signal. So thread creation happens and then we will do some job here, whatever that job may be. Maybe you're preparing the data or maybe spawning different threads so that they can work together. So, I mean, it depends on your application, but the point is, you spawn the thread, but thread is still in a waiting state. You have not signaled the thread that now you can start your execution. So thread is spawned. It is there, but it is waiting for your signal. So in main thread, in your main function, you actually created a thread. You did some job. I'll simulate this job with two, three seconds. And then what you do, you signal. So you signal for this T1 that, okay, now you start, then this thread will start and then this thread will actually signal back to main thread that okay I'm done because then main will actually wait for this T1. So this is like a signaling mechanism we are going to see in a programming fashion and that is in C++. So this binary semaphore is actually the key of everything. You have this data type in C++ 20 onwards I guess and binary semaphore you, you will create two variables initialized with zero. Say so if they are zero, meaning they are already in a blocked state. That's why when you will create a thread, it will wait for the signal, right? So it will see if it is already zero, meaning I have to stop, I will be blocked. And this application, I mean, this whole C++ code I have actually taken from CPP reference website. If you want to have it, you can go there and just get it. So we have two variables. They are initialized with zero and you can read out these comments. You can pause the video and read out all these comments. That's why I have kept these comments as it is so that it will help you and you can run this application, I mean program by going there. So this is your actually thread and this is your main function. So what is happening here is we are creating a worker thread. So this thread is created. The moment it is created, it will go and try to acquire. See, it is going to acquire the lock. This is on signaling from main to thread. It will say, okay, I am waiting on a binary semaphore variable and waiting for main to signal me. Okay. This is like this. And as it is zero, let me show you that as this main to thread is actually zero, it will be blocked here and it will wait for the signal from main thread. I mean, main function, and then it will print this and we have some three second simulation that, okay, I'm doing something. And then I will release this saying that, okay, now I know you are waiting for me on this variable. See now main thread is actually waiting on another variable. They are totally different variable. Now main is waiting for another variable, which is thread to main. 
and it is waiting here it have acquired the lock and it is waiting okay now this guy would release the lock and then only it will be able to acquire it and then go ahead and in the end we are just joining the thread let me quickly run this see if i'll execute it it is waiting and then it completed right see so what is happening here main send the signal now it is actually sending the signal here and this thread had actually acquired it i mean tried to acquire it but it could not because it was already zero now it will get the signal that okay now you can acquire it it will acquire now it is printing got the signal see thread got the signal and then it waited for three seconds here remember and then it is telling okay thread send the signal see send the signal thread send the signal and then main actually printing got the signal okay because it was trying to acquire this variable so this is how you signal each other that okay you can start you can stop okay i'm done with this job and signaling is really very important in your application because in real life examples or scenarios you will have one thread actually calling another thread i mean signaling another thread and then that thread will signal another thread so like this will keep on happening and this is the way you can implement that i'll run this again one more time see we have see it is waiting for three seconds and then it is printing cool right so let me summarize this very quickly with one binary semaphore data type variable you can do mainly two things dot acquire the lock or dot release the lock okay so this is acquiring and for that binary semaphore variable you will keep the initial value zero it means it is already logged you are not allowed in the beginning itself the moment you reach there i mean i have given this example right when thread actually reached here that time it was not allowed to go ahead it was waiting actually so on what variable it was waiting that variable should have initially a zero value that signifies it is initially blocked and this is the key difference in mutex you would have always seen that whoever reaches first in multi-threading or threading i mean just single threaded way also it will just start working right there is no waiting but in semaphore you have this feeling of signaling each other so t1 tried to acquire the lock it could not then main actually released it then t1 could acquire the lock and do the job and then main was waiting on another variable so if it is v1 then it was waiting on another variable by acquiring the lock here in main and then this v2 dot release was done in t1 so that now main is allowed to go ahead so it's like you tell me when to start and then i will tell you when to go ahead so this is a clear synchronization i would say that's why it is called synchronization primitives we have a clear way of synchronizing stuff whereas if you will go for mutex it's like you have a resource which you want to safeguard from many concurrent modifications then you will go for mutex if you have many threads and there is a synchronization required you would go for semaphore so with this note i'll finish this video and in next video we'll see maybe the difference between mutex and semaphore or maybe a counting semaphore because this is a binary semaphore maybe we'll go for counting semaphore next so thanks for watching guys bye bye take care i'll see you in the next videos bye bye